In this video, I want to provide an introduction to seemingly unrelated regression equation estimations, um, which is known sort of as a shorthand, either as SURE, so just S-U-R, or S-U-R-E estimation. So the idea with this particular type of setup is that there are, let's say, I individuals. And for each of those I individuals, we have a matrix of their independent variables xi, and we have a corresponding parameter vector, beta i, as well as the corresponding error vector, epsilon i. So let's say this should hold for all i, where i is equal to 1, sort of 2, all the way up to n. So there are n individuals, and for each of those individuals, there is a sort of matrix equation which is upheld. So the idea here is that yi for an individual has, let's say, T observation. So this is a T by one vector. And beta i here might be, let's say, a P by one vector. So that would mean that xi in this example is going to be a T by P vector. So that when we multiply these two equations together, or these two matrices together, we're going to get a T by one vector out as well. And obviously, EI is also going to be a T by one vector as well. So the idea is that there are I individuals, and for each of those individuals, there is, let's say, some time series data, and there is some time series data on both the dependent and the independent variable. It needn't necessarily be time series, but it's probably the most likely situation for this particular type of setup to occur. Furthermore, we assume that within each individual that we have a satisfaction of the Gauss-Markov conditions. So we have the, let's say, the expectation of EI, the vector EI, is equal to zero. And we also assume that the expectation of EI times, let's say, EI primed, in other words, the variance of our error given XI, is equal to, let's say, sigma I squared times the identity matrix, where the identity matrix here I'm going to write a subscript T to indicate that this is a T by T identity matrix. So notice that within each individual, we have assumed that we have no heteroscedasticity, and we also assume that within each individual, there is no serial correlation amongst errors. But what we're going to assume in this particular setup is that between individuals, there is a degree of contemporaneous correlation. So in other words, the expectation of, let's say, EIT times E, let's say, JT, given that we have both of their individuals um, independent variables, which I'm going to call X here, that might be, in general, equal to some non-zero number, which I'm going to call omega IJ. And this is going to hold for all i and for all j. There are going to be different values of omega ij for each of those different situations. So remember that we've got this particular equation up here holding for each of the different individuals. What we'd quite like is we'd quite like a way of representing this particular equation up here, but in a more compact form. So what we can do actually is we can just stack each of the dependent variables on top of one another. So our first dependent variable vector in our sort of new component might be y1, and then we put y2 directly below it, and then we have at the bottom yn, where each of these individual components isn't just a component, it's a sort of vector of components. And we could say that this is equal to, then we have a matrix where this matrix has diagonal component, components rather, x1, x2, through to xn. So each of the diagonal components actually represents a matrix of the independent variables. And what we're going to assume is that each of the off-diagonal components here is equal to zero. And then if we then multiply this by the stacked parameter vectors, so we have beta 1, beta 2, through to sort of beta n, we are nearly there in terms of reproducing this particular equation at the top here, but for all n individuals. All we need to do now is just stack each of the corresponding error vectors on top of one another. So we have E1, E2, through to En. 
And it's not hard to see how this works. Essentially, this is just ordinary matrix multiplication. You can kind of forget, if you like, about the fact that we're dealing in matrices and we're not dealing in scalars here. So for the first component, so we have the top vector, which is y1, is going to be equal to x1 times beta1 plus zeros times all the other components. So we're just going to get y1 is equal to x1 times beta1 and then we're going to get the corresponding error vector, so that's just going to be E1. So it's not difficult to see how we're going to be able to reproduce this particular equation at the top here for all I individuals, but in a single matrix equation. That's the important thing here. So the idea is that this left-hand vector now has dimensions N times T by 1. This matrix has dimensions NT by NT, and this parameter vector here has dimensions n t by 1 such that when you multiply these two things together you get an n t by 1 vector out at the end. And then finally the error vector here has the same dimensions as the dependent variable vector, it's just n t by 1. So it's not difficult to see how by stacking each of the observations on top of one another and forming a particular matrix which is filled with the matrices of the independent variables we can actually represent our system of equations for each individual in terms of a single matrix equation. And we're going to continue our discussion of this particular type of situation in the next video.